Hey, how you doing? Over here. I'm um, I'm talking sort of like this. Okay. We're in uh, beautiful Laurel Canyon on a sunny California day for our sense of place, and we're getting a chance to talk with Gary Calamar, who has been many things in the music business, from clerk at your uh, local record store uh, to a DJ at KCRW to a music supervisor of some wonderful television and film projects, and we're going to get a chance to talk with him about a number of those. But, Gary, this all happens here, huh? Well, this is where the magic happens, at uh, Go Music Services. Why don't you guys come on in? All right. Gary, this uh, puts a new definition on man cave. <laughs> yes, I'm not a, officially a hoarder, but I'm, I'm pretty close. And, uh, yeah, my wife kind of put me down here in the garage. And, uh, yeah, I've saved a few things over the years from projects I've worked on and music that I love, and um, it's, all, it's all here. Do you have artifacts from the very first thing you did? Uh, actually, something over here is I used to manage bands. Uh, the first band that I managed was The Balancing Act, who uh, had a few records on IRS, and that was their first EP, produced by Peter Case, and uh, that came out in the uh, late 80s, mid to late 80s, and um, that was a fun job, man you know, band managing. And um, that was kind of my first project, you know, after working in record stores and things like that. Um, here's... Uh, my favorite bag, Brian Wilson Smile, with some vinyl. Now, when you started working on music supervision, um, do you? Uh, what are some of your favorites? Did... My favorites are uh, well, certainly Six Feet Under and True Blood, and I've worked on Weeds for a while and Entourage. Um, but working with Alan Ball, I think, has been my my favorite projects, and I look forward to working with him again. Are there shows that you love but just don't go anywhere? Well, yeah, there was one show that I worked on um, called Emily's Reasons Why Not, and, uh, you know, it starred Heather Graham. I, I guess I should have known from the start that it was doomed, because Heather Graham played a character who could not get any dates. Um, but uh, this uh, show uh, aired we, we, what we call One and Done. One episode aired and then canceled after that. And that's kind of, you know, the downside of this business. Sometimes you have a show like uh, Dexter that goes for seven or eight seasons, and sometimes you have a, a one-and-done situation. So uh, you just roll, roll with it. I would uh, think the one-and-done is almost a success because at least it got on the air. Well, a success, yes, but not, uh, not very profitable. <laughs> Doesn't pay the bills, those one-and-done shows. Well, here, let's go swing by the, uh, the uh, CD stacks over here. Yeah, we've got some CDs, and... Uh, oh, look. I, I planted that there. It's my CD. Uh, Gary Calamore, you are you listen to. Uh, it's misfiled, but... Uh, I, that was me. I, I, I wasn't sure where the Cs were. See, that's how well I know the collection. If one thing is misfiled, I can find it. But uh, we have the uh, telephone ringing. Uh, Michelle Shocked. Uh, what is this, on the greener side of life? Yes. Yep. With real astro, real fake grass. And, um, yeah, I've collected things over the years. I, I love, you know, I love the business. I love the tchotchkes. That's part of the reasons why I, I do this. This great uh, Danny Elfman uh, piece, a box set of, uh, of his music, which is uh, pretty amazing. But uh, there's so many things stacked on it that it's hard to really get the, uh, the full impact. But uh, let's see what else. I'm not a big Def Leppard fan, but I did get this Def Leppard pyramid here has it increased the energy in the room or very much so yeah. very much so mm -hmm. um but when i bang on the uh desk i can only do it with one arm but uh, <laughs> other than that it's perfect oh uh, look look the beetle butcher block cover the infamous beetle butcher block cover which uh, my lovely wife got for me as a birthday gift one year one of my could be my favorite rock song waterloo sunset signed copy of the uh, sheet music from mr raymond douglas davies uh, what else have we got here? We're pretty much in agreement on a lot of things so far. Well, good. That's good. good. Um, a little neon sign from True Blood's Fantasia, uh -huh. which uh, is always fun. A couple of different Devo hats, uh, red and blue, for, uh, for, for different eras of the band. This is an interesting one here. You know, I used to work on the show Six Feet Under, the fabulous Six Feet Under. And this uh, Six Feet Under hearse... Um, this is a prototype. They never actually went through making these, but this actually uh, opens up into a CD player that 
pretty much almost works. And that's why they didn't uh, mass produce them. But uh, that's one of my favorite items. I'll let our, our uh, people watching know that Gary has tried for the last 10 minutes to open this. <laughs> and it's yeah. been unsuccessful. Yeah, they tell me it doesn't work, so I took their word for it. <laughs> but uh, some True Blood, uh, some actual True Blood, ah. which uh, gives me a lot of uh, energy. Sinister <laughs> energy, but energy. Oh, um, you mentioned that you do some shows upstairs. Yes. Well, we do a music series called the Mimosa Music Series here in Laurel Canyon. We used to do it out of my living room here in Laurel Canyon. And we've had artists like Donovan and Dave Alvin, John Doe, um, Steve Earle played here. Um, we've since, again, my wife uh, has insisted we move it to a larger location, so we now do it at a place called the Federal Bar. But it's amazing. We do these very cool brunch time shows and get a lot of people in the industry and a lot of you know serious music fans come out to the shows, and they're always a lot of fun. What else have we got here? Gary, maybe tell us about, these are scripts of things you're working on? Uh, well, these are not necessarily, well, there are scripts involved here, but these are sort of the paperwork, the clearances, you know, request letters. Uh, I worked on a show last season uh, called uh, Intruders for BBC, and this is just some of the paperwork that we uh, put together when we request songs from the record labels and the publishers and get quotes on, on the songs. Mm. And uh, turntable, uh, uh, got to have a turntable with the KCRW disc mat. Um, what else? Well, I think we've come pretty much far around. Oh, well, Mr. T. Mr. T, yes. Yeah, so that's where I keep all my, my pennies. Uh, sadly, the late Kim Fowley. This is from his uh, funeral, which was uh, recently. Uh, again, the band I managed, The Balancing Act, we had, uh, The Balancing Act was produced, the third album was produced by Andy Gill from Gang of Four, and that's a little picture of us there with, with Andy. And, um, yeah, you know, just trying to have some fun. As you know, I uh, wrote a song that Iggy Pop recorded, and um, so I have my b Iggy bobblehead. No office is complete without an Iggy bobblehead. Gary, uh, congratulations. You, you have... You've not had to grow up. You do it quite well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, that's uh, that, that's kind of what I tell myself. It's like, you know, I'm still doing the things that I like to do in my in my 20s, and uh, thankfully I've been able to, to make it work for the most part. Gary, thanks. Uh, this has really, really been wonderful, and Dave, uh, I could hang here all day, no doubt. Right on. Well, you're welcome anytime. But go to work. Okay. <laughs>